There are reports in U.S. media that Elon Musk is already making his presence known within Donald Trump's inner circle. Multiple outlets are reporting that Musk was on a call between Trump and Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky the day after the presidential election. Zelensky previously said on X that he called Trump on Wednesday and congratulated him on his historic landslide win. We agreed to maintain close dialogue and advance our cooperation. Strong and unwavering U.S. leadership is vital for the world and for a just peace, Zelensky wrote at the time. Well, sources close to Zelensky said that the Ukrainian president left feeling okay about Trump's victory. This despite Trump's previous criticisms that the U.S. spends too much on aid for Ukraine. So, what could this all mean for the war? Nicholas Drummond is a defense industry analyst specializing in land warfare. He joins us tonight from London. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah, good evening. Thank you. So, this phone call between Zelensky and Trump ended with Trump promising to support Ukraine without getting into details on how. What do you make of that, and what do you make about this supposed promise from President-elect Trump? Well, previously, Trump had said, you know, he could sort out the Ukraine problem in 24 hours. And I think as he now gets into the detail and as he's briefed, he's going to find out very quickly. But it's a very complex situation and cannot easily be resolved. So, you know, just, just looking at the facts, I mean, Russia is not one, going to want to give up any territory that it's gained. Um, it's not going to want to agree to anything like a, a buffer zone. Um, it will want its sanctions dropped, and, and, and Trump will not want to offer that just yet. In the meantime, Ukraine, they, they're not going to accept giving up any territory. So it's, a, it's very complex and difficult. And so, and of course, Trump really hasn't been briefed fully on the situation there and the ramifications. So he, he will want to find out what's actually going on properly before he makes a call on what that strategy to f fix uh, the situation is. What, what do you make of the reports that Elon Musk was apparently on this call as well? Well, it shows that, you know, he and Trump um, are very close. Uh, it, it's a very interesting relationship, actually, because uh, clearly uh, Musk is a, a good influence on, on Trump, exceptionally bright, lots of ideas, and, and Trump seems to listen to him. So, uh, you know, actually getting resolution here might be a, a, a matter of influencing Musk to influence Trump, um, but he's certainly going to be a force in U.S. government um, and bring a lot of good management practices and good ideas to bear. So I think that's a good thing. Do you think that once uh, Donald Trump takes office again, that we are going to see U.S. aid slow to Ukraine? And what impact would that have? Well, I, you know, he'll obviously take advice from his military advisors. Um, and I, I think the advice is going to be is, look, if you if you give up, if you sacrifice Ukraine, if you give them up and you let Russia succeed, uh, you will create a problem in Europe because you will make Putin stronger, bolder and more dangerous. And if you if you just give away that territory, um, or, or, uh, you will be appeasing Trump. And I think the real problem with doing that is it. Um, sets a terrible example for China. It's telling China that, you know, aggression, naked aggression like that is quite all right. And Trump's not going to want to do that. He's much more concerned, as he should be, about China than he is uh, about Russia. Uh, at the same time, you know, he's, he's going to want to, to do something. And, uh, you know, he, he will listen to, to what his options are. And he'll, he'll be briefed very carefully about that. And do you think that he is going to make a nuanced decision? Well, he could do. He could, you know, he could decide that, you know, he's just a, a very um, small amount of continued aid. Or he could surprise us and go all in on aid and decide actually that he wants Ukraine to win, that is in his interest to win. And... Um, a mass U.S. aid in Ukraine and go after Putin. And if Putin proves to be uncooperative, uh -huh. uh, that could be a good strategy. And of course, Trump is very concerned about two things. One is his legacy um, in American politics and on the world stage, um, but also um, to, to be effective, 
in, in doing something that, that, that makes a difference to his situation. So if he can, if, if he can actually make a, a, a positive change in Ukraine and help them, help Zelensky, uh, then he would have a terrific legacy and would be extremely popular, certainly in Europe. And I think it would define his presidency. Do you think that any anyone really knows ultimately what Donald Trump is going to do uh, once he becomes president when, when it comes to this situation? Because Donald Trump has proven himself to be very unpredictable sometimes. I don't think even Donald Trump knows what he's going to do yet. So, yes, absolutely, that 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 is the case. But, you know, there are good people there who will advise him. And as I said, you know, we, we know Elon Musk is there too. And I think they're going to want to contain the situation and ensure that it doesn't escalate into a potentially a, a global conflict. And of course, let's let's remember that you know, Trump is very concerned about Iran, as, as you've just been talking about, uh, and and they're they're very worried about what he will do in the Middle East. And of course, Iran is allied to Russia, so that actually changes the dialogue. So he's got a very complex geopolitical situation that he has to make sense of. And he won't do that without really getting a handle on, on what's going on. And, and um, But that you know, won't happen immediately. Mr. Drummond, thank you for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Pleasure. That is Nicholas Drummond, who is a defense industry analyst and former British Army officer.